guys, James Rudens with the Cornell Daily Sun. Um, I'm here with the White Panda, who are about to perform the free show in the Arts Quad, brought to you by the Cornell Concert Commission. It's a lot about image nowadays. You know, no one wants to see just some guy standing up there, you know, with a computer. That's not a show. You know, we and so the masks. Yeah, so well, these, the masks. Yeah, so we <laughs> we built this whole panda mystique a long time ago. Before we ever expected this to really turn into anything, really, but it definitely has uh, benefited us in terms of competitive mashup groups because I think it sets us apart in terms of having this branding that people think is cool and crazy. Are you guys concerned about legal action in the future, or have you faced legal action? Obviously, there's a lot of trouble with sampling with the RIA. <laughs> yeah, um, we haven't really directly run into stuff. I mean, we'll sometimes post either you know some of our music on like a channel like YouTube or SoundCloud, and actually they'll take it down. Justin um, Bieber always. Whenever yeah. you put up a Justin Bieber mix, it gets taken down so fast. The record labels are protective of the Biebs, but. Um, <laughs> Yeah, other than that, we really haven't had any issues. Um, it's kind of a, it's tough because when we sample stuff, in one sense, you know, we're using copyrighted material, um, but in another sense, artists that we sample get a lot more exposure from our fan base being kind of tapping in. Like, if you haven't heard like a Jackson 5 song for a while and we sample it over a Jay-Z song, people are kind of like, oh yeah, I remember that Jackson 5 song, then maybe go on iTunes and download it. So in a certain sense, we help out artists too. Um, and it's just kind of a gray area that record labels haven't really tapped into yet, so we've been fortunate so far. And our music's free, and we don't yeah, that's, require people to pay for it, which is cool. a huge thing, too. Yeah. Um, so in this unique mashup format, how do you approach a live show differently from a band or a rapper or something? Beyond the obvious, which is that we're producing stuff on computers versus like instruments, um, a lot of what we do differently is transitioning. You know, we have songs that have their apex, and so do, you know, so would Blink-182, but at the end of their song, they just stop, and at the end of our song, we have to find a way to smoothly calm it down and mix it into the next mix before we go up and make the climb again. So, it's about keeping things continuous versus just song, song, song.